Today we're gonna dive deep into memory leaks. I'm gonna explain what memory leaks are, what causes memory leaks in your app, how to analyze them using your browser's dev tools, and of course, how to prevent them. I would say if you're ready, let's get started. So we're gonna start by defining memory leaks and let's go through a bit of a theory. So memory leaks has symptoms. One of the symptoms has definitely happened to you. Have you ever had a case when the Chrome starts exp complaining that it, the page is unresponsive and you either have to wait or quit? That is a mostly a clear sign of a memory leak. The second one is when your browser simply gets slow and you cannot switch tabs anymore. That's also one of the signs of a memory leak. And the third one is probably when your OS, when your operating system, just your computer is become slow because your browser eats up more and more RAM of your computer. Well, let's look at a practical example. What causes actually, what can actually cause a memory leak in your JavaScript code? And we're gonna start by defining a constant variable called, let's say, let's call it X. X is equal 10. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle. This rectangle simply represents our memory of our, the memory of our computer. Let's make it transparent for simplicity. And this constant points to some area in our whole memory, and it points to this specific chunk. Let's make it green. So const x equals 10 basically refers to this green chunk, but there are some other chunks as well that are also be being referred from, from within our code. Let's make a different color so that it's easier to understand. So I'm gonna draw some more arrows, just signifying that there are references from our code to these chunks in the memory. So when does a um, memory leak happen here? It happens when we have an arrow, but in fact, there shouldn't be an arrow, meaning, there shouldn't be any reference to the memory. This variable is not needed anymore, but for some reason, the arrow stays there. Well, how ideally should a memory be cleared up? Because in JavaScript, the memory uh, is cleared up automatically, should be cleared up automatically. And it's cleared up automatically using a thing called garbage collector. So JavaScript is a language that has a garbage collector, meaning you don't have to manage your memory manually. It, it gets, cleared automatically and assigned automatically. So what does garbage collector do? It has a specific process consisting of, consisting of three steps. First step, find the root node in your code and recursively go through every child. And it's, it's child, the, the, the root node in, in the browser code is the window object. In Node.js, it's the global variable. So the second step is mark every child, including the root, as active or as inactive. Active means this part of memory is referenced, this part of code is referenced in the memory. Inactive means it's not referenced from anywhere. And the third step is simply delete all inactive ones, which means if the variable is not needed anymore in the memory, simply delete it, looking at our example above. So x10 should be deleted from the memory. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question. Where do you think a memory leak happens here? Well, I already drew an arrow. It happens exactly on the third step. For some reason, actually on the second step, for some reason, the variable that needs to be cleared out doesn't get marked as inactive and it doesn't get deleted. Well, there are three causes that can cause memory leaks. Do you see this window.x? That's a global variable. You probably heard many times that it's a really bad practice to have global variables, never have global variables. It can also be a function. Uh, let's simply say uh, window dot uh, calc equals to some function that imagine it does something heavy inside. That's obviously gonna stay on the root because root is accessing it. And, and, the, and the garbage collector thinks that it's, it's always active because it sits on the root. First thing that you can do is obviously use strict. We use strict is gonna prevent you from these memory leaks uh, because it's gonna throw errors as soon as you have global variables or simply not use any global variables. Just, just keep this in mind. 
Second point when a memory leak can happen is when you have set timeout or set interval and you have a callback inside that has some dependencies. Dependencies are bad in, in, in timeout as long as you don't clear the timeout. So imagine we have this let node and let's grab something from the DOM to so document get element by ID. Uh, let's imagine there's some node inside. And usually when you delete a, a node from your JavaScript, uh, what you're gonna do is you, um, on the next line, you're gonna grab the element again. So let's uh, grab the node, remove. So that's how you're, you're removing. But this timeout, always gonna keep a reference to this node, even if it's deleted. So make sure you always clear your timeout. The way you clear your timeout is by first assigning your timeout to some kind of a variable. So let's call it my timeout. And now simply call clear timeout and put your timeout uh, variable inside it. That's why, that way, when the timeout is cleared, all the references inside it are also gonna be garbage collected. The third case, and one of the four cases, actually there are four, third case is when it's similar to the second one, when you have, let's say, a list of uh, an object that contains list of elements or references to the, to the DOM, and let's say get element by ID, let's say there's some kind of a BTN um, reference to a button. And normally, again, the way you remove this element is you would access it again and run dot remove, but it's still not deleted from the dictionary, from the object. So node still has the reference inside. So always make sure you delete it from the object itself as well. Otherwise it's never gonna get garbage collected. So what we do is simply write uh, delete and nodes.btn. That's how you make sure that it's deleted. Uh, there's a fourth way of causing a memory leak using closures, but it's very rare, so I'm not gonna go over it. And now let's look at two very uh, famous patterns that you're gonna see uh, in memory leaks. First of all, it goes up, it goes down, it gets garbage collected, it goes up again, goes down. That's what you're gonna see in the performance tab in your dev tools, or something like this when it goes up and just stays on this line. It means it gets garbage collected, but it causes again. And the second one is much more easier to, to detect. It's when it looks like like some kind of steps. So it goes up, goes up. So it goes, it, it eats up more memory uh, by every second. This one is obviously much more easier to detect. But now before we go into our browser to analyze these memory leaks in a practical example, I first of all want to show you the code that is gonna cause uh, a memory leak. And this code doesn't look very good but let's take, take a look at it. So when I said code, I actually meant a very small project consisting of an index.js with has a garbage code <laughs> and then index.html. Uh, so let's look at the HTML and it has a button that calls this grow function. And the grow function is just has all the bad practices that we just discussed. So it creates an array, uh, an array and pushes into this global variable X. It's already a red flag. And we also have a timeout, which never gets cleared. Obviously, it's another uh, cause of memory leaks. And we are constantly creating new nodes without deleting them or handling them in any way. Obviously, that's going to increase our memory every thousand milliseconds. Now let's go to the browser. In the browser, we're going to work with these two tabs, performance and memory, which, is, which are going to help us to analyze memory leaks. We have this grow button on the top that causes memory leaks, but let's first take a recording in our performance tab and press the grow button to cause some memory leaks. And now let's wait for one second and press stop. Now we have a cool recording showing us also make sure you have this memory ticked so that we see all these spikes. So the blue one, the JS heap, as you can see, it looks exactly like the pattern that we discussed before. It gets uh, garbage collected, but it goes up the millisecond after. And this green one that goes up steadily. So that's another pattern that we obviously have a 
have a memory leak and it's the number of nodes that is going up. So to dig deeper, uh, unfortunately, the prof performance tab is not enough. So you have to switch to the memory tab to find where exactly, where exactly in your code the memory leaks uh, originate from. So first of all, we're going to use this heap snapshot and take a snapshot and when the app is resting, so there are no memory leaks. And now let's cause a memory leak and let's press it again and take another snapshot. And as you can see, the it's already bigger, 4.5 megs versus 4.1. So I assure you, if I press it again and take another snapshot, it's going to be probably even bigger. Let's take a look. Yeah, and it is 5.6. It means our app size is growing and growing with every second and as, as we press buttons. But let's look at the summary of the constructors. So we have this distance. Distance means, do you remember the garbage collector? Distance means uh, from the point of view of a garbage collector, how far is this element, how is this constructor from the root? We have shallow size and bytes, like how much the memory, how much memory takes in bytes and retain size is how much memory takes in, in, taken in account all of its dependencies. Now we can switch the comparison and we're on snapshot three, three, but comparing it to snapshot two, as you can see, the deltas on the right are all increasing, meaning we're simply increased the memory compared to snapshot two, as we're on snapshot three. And it caused by this HTML div element. But if you look down, you can't really identify anything. This internal node is coming from the C++ code of your of, of the Chrome. So it doesn't tell us much. Maybe in the future they will change this. But for now, it's very ambiguous. And we have text that doesn't say us anything either. And concatenate string. Okay, well, so far we know that there's a memory leak, but didn't we're not able to find the or, or where it originates from. Let's go to the summary again. And now let's switch to a different thing, objects allocated between snapshot two and snapshot three. Basically what changed between snapshot two and snapshot three. As you can see, we have something weird, 1200 div elements that were created between two snapshots and a string. Wow, this X looks very familiar. We're basically concatenating the, the Xs. And as you can see, we have this X in window. This definitely looks familiar. This is the global variable that we saw in the code before. That's a really bad practice. And you should never have global variables assigned. And obviously we found the culprit. It's the X that is holding all these X values and it's causing us a memory leak. Um, 1300 um, references inside. But still, what about this HTML div element? We were still not able to find where it's originating from. Let's now switch to a different way of uh, analyzing. Make sure you have this record stack traces as well. And uh, we are on allocation instrumentation on timeline. So we're gonna cause another memory leak and start recording. As you can see, we have these blue spikes there. These blue spikes mean when our memory gets utilized and it's get utilized every second for some reason. Let's zoom into one of these spikes and we see that again, we have a lot of uh, references created. And let's take a look. Yeah, this looks familiar already. And what about allocation? We switch to allocation and let's say sorted by size. We see this grow function seems like this growth function is using up a lot of memory and it sits on, on the root. And we also have this join function and we also have this create some nodes. These are functions that we already saw in the code previously. And obviously to reduce the memory that's getting used up and overall just to um, avoid the memory leaks, we need to do something with these functions. And what do you do with these functions? You simply follow best practices and refactor your code. We're not going to do this in this video, but at least you know what to do next time you see this kind of memory leaks. I hope this video was helpful. And it if it was, please uh, smash like for the YouTube algorithm. It's going to help a lot. And um, hopefully I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care.